Part 2 of my databases tutorial explains the second stage in making a database activity in Moodle. The second stage involves setting up the fields, or the spaces that your students will fill in as they add an entry. You'll recall that we were working on a weekly learning log for our students, so the fields that I'm going to make are related to that concentration. When you click Save and Display, you're taken to the Fields tab across the top of your database activity. There's View List, Single, Search, Add Entry, Export, Templates, Fields, and Presets. We'll take a look at each of these. In the Fields tab, you'll set up your fields that students will complete per entry. Drop down the Create a New Field activity to choose any type you need. For example, for my weekly log, I'd like my students to start out by putting in the date. Field name will be date. And the field description is optional. I'm going to put in date again, but I can skip that if I don't want to fill it in. The date field will provide them with a drop-down menu to be able to choose when they're entering their entry. I'm also going to give them a text area, another kind of field, so that they can type in their learning log. Something like, what did you learn? Those two fields are the only things I need right now, but you can see that dropping down this menu allows me to add any number of these fields, including a menu, a checkbox, um, a text field and a text area, even a web address. Students can also upload a file in response to an entry, which is very useful. When I'm finished adding my fields, I can take a look at what my templates look like, which is how my students will view the information presented in the database. That's the second tab next to fields. In the templates window, take a look at this thin line of text right underneath the templates tab. This is where you navigate between the different templates that you configure. Right now, we're viewing the single template, which is what it looks like when you click on view single. So these two are closely related. View list, same thing. The list template is right here. The search template is also customized by me, and the add entry template is also customized by me. Let's take a look at the add entry screen. This is what the new entry page looks like right now. You can see I have the date field and what did you learn. If I'd like to mix this up a little, I'm going to go to templates and the add template and I can adjust what that page looks like. Now this means that, for example, I can take out the colon that's automatically added after what did you learn and I can add more information like please type at least two paragraphs. So I can add more information even though my fields are very simply labeled. I'm going to boldface these two to give them a little bit of uh, better formatting and I'm going to select everything and take the size up to 14 points so it's nice and big. So I'm adjusting my template right in here, the appearance anyway. Now what happens if I need to add a field? Well, right now you can see that there are field placeholders for the date and what did you learn. They're marked by double brackets. I get these fields again by coming over to my available fields area. Simply click on them and it'll enter that field. Now I didn't want to do that right where my cursor was because that actually is no longer valid. I entered a second copy of that field in the existing copy, so I'm just going to delete that. But you get the idea. Wherever your cursor is, when I click, that field will be added. The double brackets indicates a placeholder for the field that can be modified. Regular text, though, will appear just as you enter it. Let's take a look. I'm going to save my template and click Add Entry at the top. Ah, now I can see that the additional prompt in there is set, and these are bold-faced and nice and big. What about my other templates? Well, I've got a list template to look at, which looks a little different. In this case, we still have the date and what did you learn fields displayed, but we also have some control buttons for the teacher, such as editing that particular entry. Perhaps a student wrote something that was not so uh, appropriate and you'd like to go in and clean it up. A more so that you can see more details about the entry. Delete to get rid of it entirely and approve. Now I talked about approve earlier and in this particular database I'm never going to be approving students entries for public viewing. They're going to remain private between the student and I. So I'm going to completely delete the approve field from my view list. I don't even want to be tempted to accidentally approve one so I'm going to take that out. If I need it back, again, those are available on this side. 
Other fields that are available for me include time added, time modified, the author of the entry, and a place to view any comments on the entry. Let's save my template and see what I get. List, view list. Ah, no entries yet. Let's go back and add an entry. For today's date, I learned to make databases. When I save this entry, now let's view the list. And it displays them in a list format, so as I continue to add entries, they'll stack up here. Viewing a single entry is the equivalent of clicking on the uh, magnifying glass that you saw back in the view list mode. Let's take a look at that. There's a small magnifying list that a glass that allows you to view more. That takes you over to the view single tab. Now that I have an entry, I can search by the same fields that I added before. What did you learn? Author first name and author surname. The date isn't available for searching. That's not a field that, um, that's in there. However, you can search for the date that it was added. So let's go in and customize the search template. In the search template, we can do the date, what did you learn, the first name, and the last name. So now we've taken a look at view list, view single, search, add entry, templates, and fields. The export tab is where you're going to be able to download the information that's added to your database. It comes down as a CSV file, or you can download it as Excel or OpenOffice. The presets area allows you to import and export fields and layouts that you've created from other databases. That's all you'll need to know for now. Think creatively about how you can implement the, implement the database in your Moodle classroom.